This is the 2022 Toyota Tacoma SR5 Trail Edition. We're gonna check out all the features and then take it to our test hill to see if this thing's any good off-road. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. The Tacoma is getting a bit long in the tooth, but that's not really stopping Toyota from adding on features with each new year. Take for example, the Trail Edition. Reintroduced in 2021, for 2022, the Trail Edition gets new features to make it even better off-road. What differentiates the Trail from a normal SR5 is a long list of off-road focused goodies. It includes a mild suspension lift of 1.1 inches in the front and a half inch in the back. Also, check out these tires and wheels. These are 16 inch alloys that look like they came off of a TRD Pro. They're wrapped in Goodyear Wrangler territory altering tires that are reinforced with Kevlar. This should give us decent traction when we hit the trail later. One thing to note that even though this is an all terrain, it is not three peak rated. So even though it is mud snow rated, it's not something you really wanna use in deep snow conditions. In the front, it has a skid plate borrowed from the TRD off-road. So it's not like the big chonky one that you get on the TRD Pro, but it still does the job. Inside, it has all season mats. And then of course on the back, it has a trail badge. Prices, you see it here with a number of options, 43,164 US dollars, including destination and delivery. Under the hood is a legendary 3.5 liter V6 engine. It's good for up to 278 horsepower and 265 pound-feet of torque. It's connected to a six-speed automatic transmission. Power goes to all four wheels with a part-time four-wheel drive system enhanced with a rear locking differential. EPA rates this setup at 18 miles to the gallon in town and 22 on the highway. A couple things I want to point out about this vehicle is that the suspension's actually been lifted slightly. It has 9.4 inches of ground clearance, which is great. Also, down here, it may not officially be a recovery hook, but it is a really beefy tie down that can probably be used as such, at least unofficially. This particular truck is equipped with a five foot bed. It has a total payload capacity of 1,155 pounds. It also has a tow hitch receiver and this can pull up to 6,400 pounds. The bed is composite and it does come with a couple of lock boxes already installed. If you need extra room, you can take these out, though it does take some tools. It also has an AC power outlet that's good for up to 120 volts, 400 watts. Not enough power for a power tool, but good enough for a small accessory. This even gets a full-size matching spare tire under the bed. Because this is a double cab, that means there's not a lot of room in the second row. But let's just see how an adult fits. Oh, that's tight. I am at six foot one, legs torso proportionate. My knees are rubbing against the driver's seat. This is where I would have the seat if I were driving. Uh, and it's obviously very tight here. I do get two bottle holders, which is nice. And that's about it. Since this has a double cab, that means it's not very big in the second row. However, I can also use these. Let's see, how does this work? That goes forward, that folds, that needs to fold down. Doesn't that just fold down? I thought that just folded down. Ah, okay. How does that fold down? There we go. Wait, now it's too high. <laughs> ah. I don't know. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but that's not flat. So if I take it out completely, I can fold it flat, put the headrest there. Look, it's flat. So there's extra ways that you can actually store gear in the second row here, uh, which is convenient if you don't plan on using this for passengers. Oh yeah, this is familiar. <laughs> Gotta put the key in. Oh yeah, classic truck experience. So what can I say about this truck that I haven't said before? 
I've driven a lot of these. We've done lots of reviews over the years. Uh, this thing really hasn't changed that much. The biggest differences are in what they include standard. The thing that I can't get over with Tacomas is the way that you sit. Your feet are really high, your bottom's low, and the wheel does not come forward very much. So it's kind of a, you know, it's kind of an awkward seating position for some people. Other people love it. So that's fine. But you know, with my build, I just don't find this terribly comfortable, which is weird because the 4Runner feels great. You have different seating position in that vehicle and it works better for me. Uh, but still, you know, we have a really nice steering wheel here. The gauge cluster isn't particularly fancy, but it is very functional. And here I can bop through all the settings, including information about the vehicle, mileage, compass, Sirius XM. Uh, we have the adaptive cruise control system, which yeah, this at least has adaptive cruise control as well as lane detection. Does not have lane centering though. It's the older Toyota system, uh, but it does work really well. It has anti-collision, blind spot warning, and rear cross traffic alerts, which is pretty cool. One more over, I can adjust the sensitivity for the pre-collision system as well as for lane detection. So that's all pretty straightforward. Over here we have the really old infotainment system, all of Toyota and Lexus's new vehicles are getting an all new system that is cloud connected. This one is older, but it is pretty easy to use and it has some decent features. It will support Apple CarPlay as well as Android Auto. It has navigation built in. Um, it's not a terribly exciting navigation, but I do like that it is not reliant on the cloud, which means that you can go off-road and still have full map capability as well as breadcrumbing, which is actually a really good feature. Uh, so you can find your way out if you happen to get into, you know, a very difficult to get in and out of off-road area. It's going into reverse and it turns into a pretty low resolution backup camera. There are no tracking lines, but there is a center point to help align for the hitch. Um, this does have towing capability with anti-sway. There is no brake controller up here though. Below the infotainment system is both the aircon, which is dual zone, which I like. And then we also have the controller here for the part-time four-wheel drive system. Yes, part-time. That means that you are gonna be rolling in rear wheel drive most of the time. If you're on a slippery surface, you can put it into four high. And then if you get into challenging situations, you can put it into four low and you do have to put it into neutral to switch that transfer case. Speaking of the transmission, it is a six speed automatic and it does have a sport mode as well as manual override. Okay, what else? Uh, we got lots of cup holders, bins for stuff. We have a handbrake right here, which is cool. No sunroof on this model. The seats are pretty comfortable. You'll note that they are wrapped in fabric here and they also have contrast stitching that is specific to the trail edition. If you do move up to like a TRD off-road premium, you can get synthetic seats that are quite nice. Um, these ones I think will do. And of course I have power adjustments on the driver's side. Passenger does not get those. The rear window back there is power. I also get a USB-A socket as well as a 12 volt. The biggest difference between this vehicle and the TRD off-road is what's up here, or should I say what isn't up here. We don't get A-Track, we don't get MTS, we don't have crawl control. Those are some of the hardcore off-road features that really, if you're just kind of lightly going off-road, you don't really need. However, you do have a rear locking differential here, which can get you through quite a lot. That's Don't underestimate the value of a rear locker. These things are great. So that's basically it. This is a very straightforward truck. Now we are gonna test this very limited off-road set on our off-road test course. Uh, but first let's jump on the freeway and see how it drives. Recently we reviewed the TRD Pro version of the Tacoma, so I'm not going to belabor many of the things that are similar on this vehicle. Like the power. This isn't particularly quick, especially with a V6, and it is a 3.5 liter V6, and it's been around forever. It is of course attached to this six-speed automatic transmission, and this transmission is known to hunt in certain conditions. 
Uh, that is, it doesn't really find its gearing, especially when going up inclines. It's just a known issue with this vehicle. But still, there is something very charming about the Tacoma truck, and especially this truck, because it has all of the off-road goodies without any of the advanced off-road features. This is your basic SR5. It's lifted a little bit and has off-road protection and all-terrain tires. I mean, it's, this is kind of like a classic truck. You get a rear locker, but you don't get any fancy off-road things like crawl control or MTS system. You don't even get A-Track on this, which is pretty funny. But for somebody looking for a more basic truck, this might hit the sweet spot. Of course, this has been upgraded with a number of features to make it almost as expensive as a TRD off-road. But you don't have to get all those features. I mean, things like the parking sonars, those were extra. Uh, the rear cross traffic alerts, that was extra. The upgraded infotainment system, yep, you guessed it, cost extra. But those aren't really improvements on the truck. They just are nice to have. Uh, so if you did want a basic truck with just a key and you want a rear locker and raised with all terrains, maybe this is the truck you've been waiting for. On the freeway here, it does have one thing standard that I really like, and that is adaptive cruise control. I just set my speed and I will slow down if the vehicle in front of me is driving slower than I am. It's a very nice safety feature. That said, one thing to keep in mind is that this does not really have lane centering. Instead, it just has a lane detection system so that it will notify me with a beep if I go over the line. It's not particularly helpful uh, honestly, I usually just turn that off. So right now I have cruise control set for the speed limit here, and it's holding me at a pretty high 2,500 RPM, maybe 2,400 RPM at 70 miles per hour. Oh, and now it's shifting. Now we're up to 3,000 RPM. These seats, even though they are fabric, they are very comfortable, and I have just enough headroom here to feel comfortable as well. Yeah, this is actually a pretty comfortable place to be. I don't like having my legs quite this high, and that's a complaint I always have in the Tacoma. I kind of hope they fix the ergonomics when this vehicle gets all new in the next year or so. Before we head up to our test hill, we're gonna pop off on the forest roads here to see how well this vehicle handles. Now this is a very easy vehicle to kind of like set up for the different scenarios because it has so few features. Um, I do have sport mode on the transmission, which also allows for a manual override. It is just a standard six-speed automatic transmission, so nothing special there. I do think it sounds pretty good, and the looks of this truck are great. This is, I think, one of the best looking trucks you can still buy today, which is amazing considering how long this truck has been around. So let's see, manual override, Oop, downshift to two, floor it and shift. Uh, 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 come on, four, eh. Even though you can manually shift, it's not really a great experience. So that's really only if you need it uh, to force a specific gear for a specific scenario. Uh, on the road here, pavement, it's a little bouncy, it's a little wavy, it definitely feels like it's kind of an off-road setup. You get that kind of like, you know, sea momentum. <laughs> it's like being out on a vessel on the ocean. You get a little bit of roll in the corners. Uh, you also get a little bit of bounce when you're going over things, uh, but that should pay dividends when we actually get into the tough stuff because you don't want firm suspension in those situations. You know, this is pretty fun to drive and we're gonna head back onto the freeway in a second here, but first let's turn it around and try a zero to 60 to see how quick this setup is. Gonna line up. We got drive, and that's all I can do. I'm still in rear-wheel drive mode. Three, two, one, go. We'll slow off the line, picking it up. 40, 50, and 60 in 7.93 seconds. Ouch, <laughs> this thing's slow. <laughs> okay, now let's jump back on the freeway, continue our adventure.
driving for about an hour and the seat comfort, not loving it. I don't have a lot of support under my thighs and so I don't really have any place for my feet to go. The issue is this steering wheel and how far I have to move the seat up to be able to get my hand in the correct position. If the steering wheel would go back more, it would help fix this situation. But as it is, my legs are both cramped up front as well as higher than I like them. So I don't know if I'd really want to take this on a state to state trip. That said, the rest of the vehicle, I mean, steering wheel still feels great. I'm just rolling along, enjoying Apple CarPlay with a cable <laughs> and uh, everything's going good. Yeah, so next stop, the test hill. And we'll see exactly how good is a vehicle like this when it only has a rear locker. That's it. Outside of the ergonomic issues, the truck is pretty decent. I like a lot of the stuff that it's doing here. Um, the knobs are very easy to use. Apple CarPlay, yeah, it uses a cable, but it does work. Even the little steering buttons, yeah. And of course, adaptive cruise control, love that. Enough about the basics of the vehicle, it's time to have some fun. We're gonna now turn off and hit the test hill. Well, I just checked the course and it is a sloppy mess still. Uh, we are getting the main road redone and uh, that's not gonna happen for a couple more weeks. And right now all the water is just draining and pooling on our test courses. But that's okay because this is a truck. It has 9.4 inches of ground clearance, underbody protection, and all-terrain tires. It should get through this no problem. So for setup, so I have to engage four high first, put my transmission into neutral, and then I can engage four low. Can't get too excited. <laughs> okay, put it into drive. And let's go. Now there's no real features here, really. I mean, the features are just built into the form and function of this truck. Uh, we have a four low, we have great approach angle, we have a good departure angle, breakover is nice, and of course I have that rear locker if I need it. And I'm not gonna turn it on until if and when it is necessary. Now for this first test, we're gonna go uh, over the Rattler and it is turned into a mud bog on the way up to the start of the course. So let's kind of roll through this. I actually kind of like this, this is cool. But it does limit the type of vehicles we can take out here, of course. But still, I, I like having a hard course. Okay, just smooth throttle and we'll get onto the rocks. Okay, we're onto the rocks, ready for the next stage. Now this next section is mostly about um, making sure that there's enough ground clearance and then also just feeling how the throttle is and just how the truck in general gets over this challenging rock road. And then when the rocks end, there's a steep climb that's kind of a little bit muddy. So that'll be kind of interesting. A good test on the tires and how well these can clear themselves while spinning. Do I need a rear locker? I don't think so. Let's do this without the locker. And away we go. Just slowly crawl. Now, because it's a low range, not only does it multiply torque, it allows for very slow crawling. And we actually designed this road after uh, the forest roads that we find in the Cascade Mountains. They use the same type of rocks. So this would not be that unusual of a road to find if you're going off the beaten path. Yeah, no problem. Very easy to have a progressive throttle with that low range. Now, <laughs> the climb. And we're gonna try the climb without a rear locker. See how this does. I would really like to see uh, the trail in front of me, but this has no trail cam. Also, I have no inclinometer. Yeah, not a lot of, uh, not a lot of toys in the toolkit. Okay, let's do this. Now we're still in four low. Locker is not on, and I'm gonna just try to maintain some momentum and throttle as I do this really tight right turn. Oh, dude, when it's wet, that is a very difficult climb. However, I guess it's had enough time to dry out, so, you know, it was really easy. Now we're gonna head to the Sidewinder. Have the same entrance here through the slop, 
which, you know, it's not so bad that I need to engage a rear locker, so that's nice. Of course, I totally messed up my mirror there. Okay, and up and over. Okay, there is no hill descent control system here, so I just get to do it with my foot. No big deal, though. Now, in lieu of a hill descent control system, I can switch into manual mode and go down to one. And then it just uses engine compression to uh, ease me down. Not quite the same thing as a hill descent control system, though, uh, because that one would proactively use the four wheel brakes to keep the vehicle straight. Let's go into drive. This is really mucky here. Check that approach angle. Oh, pretty good. Keep throttle in. Oh, and up we go. Now the logs. So this section here has a cross cut followed by a few logs. And the logs are just on the left side of the track. So the right wheel is actually not going to be uh, going over the logs. In fact, it's a little muddy on the inside. So uh, yeah, let's see what this does without a locker and we'll see if we need to enable it. And the idea here is to see exactly when a locker is useful. So the more I go to the right, the harder the line. And I'm gonna to try to keep it all the way over there. Now at this point, we're probably seeing back wheel spin. I'm just gonna to try to go smoothly over, maintain a little momentum. I have skid plates, so I don't have to worry about if I ding a little bit. Man, this is, this is making it easy. Oh, oh, okay. Now we have back wheels spinning, just digging us in. This is where a uh, rear locker is useful. Engage that. Wait for the light to quit flashing. There, okay. Now we have both wheels locked. Uh, still stuck. Let's get a little momentum. Back, forward. Oh, yes! <laughs> a little rougher than I thought it was going to be. I guess we dug down a little deep there. Now let's line up for the hardest part of the Sidewinder. Yeah, this is going to be tricky. Uh, without any kind of MTS or, you know, fancy off-road modes, this is going to be hard. But it gives us a really good opportunity to see exactly what the difference is between a vehicle that has those systems, like the TRD Pro, and the vehicle that doesn't have those systems. In fact, right now, let's play the clip of the TRD Pro that we tested just a few weeks ago going up the same climb. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on MTS, and we're gonna switch MTS to mud and sand. Let's do mud and sand, because we want wheel spin, because I need to free up the lugs on these all-terrain tires so they can do work. So we got it rear locked, we have MTS on, and we should be able to just get right up. Get right up. Come on, you got this, you got this, yeah! Okay, you can see that it made a great job of it. Now, let's see what it does without MTS and without crawl control. So I'm gonna keep my rear locker on. I'm in four low. We have a lot more vegetation on this course than even just a couple weeks ago. And let's do it. I'm just gonna use a little momentum to get up and uh, a little bit of that traction in the back. Up we go, up we go. Oh man, it's so much easier when it's just, it has that level of moisture right now that it's kind of creating uh, more of a cemented kind of layer. Uh, previously, if it's really dry, then it's just sand. Uh, when it's really wet, it's just mud. Right now we kind of hit that sweet spot, which makes this truck look awesome. Regular viewers will note that the comparable Ford Ranger Tremor had major issues making the same climb last year but it is important to point out the difference in the road surface between the two tests. Today was our first run following several rain and sun weather cycles. The Ford made its attempt when the course was a lot softer and drier, making it more difficult. Now, I don't want to take away just how good the lift and locker setup is on this Toyota Tacoma SR5 trail, but make sure to take into account road conditions when making any comparisons. Now, let's wrap this up. Okay, now that we've done that, we've gone through all the things, we just have the victory climb. And I'm just gonna, actually I'm gonna turn off that rear locker, keep it in drive. Actually, let's put it into four high, neutral. 
and I'm just going to floor it. You know what? That that's we can do better. We can do better. Let's let's do that again. I had traction control on, and it was just cutting power as I was climbing. So this time, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm turning traction control off. Let's get some wheel spin going. Traction off. See if I hold it down. Does it go all the way? Now it's all the way off. Okay, now we can have some fun. And floor it. It's not flooring it. Okay. Now, <laughs> let's put the transmission in sport. We are going to have some fun. Darn it. Okay. Sport. First gear. Four high. Floor it. Huh. There, it just didn't want to spin the wheels. I was full to the floor, wouldn't spin the wheels. This is a truck that is very capable. Not only did it get through our course like it was nothing, it also gave us confidence with that underbody protection, with that extra ground clearance. I knew I could increase my speed to entry of the difficult sections and not worry about damaging the vehicle. Plus, articulation really put those wheels down so they had grip where grip was available. Now we had a little bit of an issue on the log, but even when I locked that rear, it still spun. Now that is a situation where something like MTS actually would have been helpful because it would have stopped that spinning wheel and put all the torque to the wheel with grip. Uh, but it was a challenging situation. A lot of vehicles kind of struggle on that. And again, this one, because of the underbody protection and the extra ground clearance, I just charged over it and got over it just fine. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look at the 2022 Toyota Tacoma Trail Edition 4x4 Double Cab. Be sure to like, subscribe, share videos. We make them for you, and I hope you enjoy them.